there! It's good to see you. Welcome to Arts and Crafts with Miss Kyla. That's me. I'm an artist and teacher coming to you from Southern California, and I'm so excited to get to work with you through Encore. Just a few things before we get started. Before you start any new arts and crafts project, it's important to get organized. So we want to make sure our space is okay for us to work in. You might be on the floor, at a table or a counter, or outside. Wherever you are, it's probably a good idea to cover your workspace with a tablecloth or a big piece of paper. That'll make cleanup just that much easier. For this project, you might want to use scissors, glue, or other craft supplies around your space. Make sure whatever you're using, it's okay for you to use. And if you're not sure, ask an adult. You might also find you need help cutting or gluing something, and an adult isn't available to help you right now. You can always get creative and think of another way to do what you want with your project, or you can be patient and go back to that step later. I can't wait to get started on this week's project, so let's get going. This week, we're gonna talk about sound. We don't usually pay attention to all the different sounds around us at any one time, but there's so many. And in theater, movies, and TV shows, sound can tell us a lot about the world we're in and the characters who live in that world. Whether we live in a city, or maybe by the beach, or maybe we're somewhere very quiet. Shh. Sorry. Sound can tell us a lot about the world and the people in it. For example, sound could tell us what's in this box. Huh? What could that be? That was weird, I wonder. Ooh. Quill, what are you doing in there? <laughs> How'd I do? I thought you were gonna save the sound effects for the story. Oh, I got excited. I am a Corvid after all. We are nature's sound designers. Oh right, you have a special ability to mimic sounds you hear, right? That's right. The Corvid family includes ravens, magpies, blue jays, and crows. We're all great sound mimickers because we're also very good listeners. How do you become a good listener, Quill? Oh, you have to practice, just like anything you want to get good at. I practice listening by making sure my body and beak are quiet and opening my ears to really pay attention to the sounds around me. That's really smart of you. So much for being bird-brained, huh? Just check out my cousin, mimicking the sound of a siren from his home in Australia. Good, right? He noticed the sound of sirens and listened to it really carefully until he could mimic it perfectly. Hey, speaking of listening, do you have a story for us this week? I sure do. It's back at the nest, but it's all about practicing our listening. That sounds perfect. Want me to send you back? Yep. All right, ready, Quill? Ready. All right, here you go. Sorry, Quill! Ugh! I'm okay! It was mostly sound effects. <clears throat> Hi, everyone! This week, we're going to be reading The Listening Walk by Paul Showers. It's all about taking the time to listen and notice the different sounds all around us. In showbiz, we're always thinking about what a story, a place, or a character might sound like. I think we all know what I sound like. <laughs> you can be a natural sound designer just like me and my fine feathered family by first practicing your listening. Remember, good listening means our minds are focused on keeping our ears open and paying attention. It's helpful to keep our bodies, and especially our beaks, still and quiet and make sure that we are not distracted. So, let's listen to the story and pay attention to all the sounds the characters hear on their walk and what that tells us about where they are. The Listening Walk by Paul Showers I like to take walks. I take walks with my father and our dog. Our dog is called Major. He is an old dog and he does not walk very fast. 
We go down the street and we do not talk. My father puts his hands in his pockets and thinks. Major walks ahead and sniffs. I keep still and listen. I call this a listening walk. On a listening walk, I do not talk. I listen to all the different sounds. I hear many different sounds when I do not talk. First, I hear Major's toenails on the sidewalk. Major has long toenails. When he walks, his toenails scratch the sidewalk. They go. I hear my father's shoes on the sidewalk. My father walks slowly and his shoes go. I can't hear my shoes. I wear sneakers. I hear all sorts of sounds on a listening walk. I listen to sounds I never listened to before. I listen to lawnmowers. Lawnmowers are noisy. A lawnmower makes a steady zooming noise. It goes like this. I like to listen to lawn sprinklers. Lawn sprinklers are very quiet. They make different sounds. Some sprinklers make a steady whispering sound like this. Other sprinklers turn around and around. They go like this. On a listening walk, I hear cars in the street. The shiny new cars are quiet. They make only a soft But old cars are very noisy. Old cars sound like this. When cars go around the corner too fast, the tires go When cars stop quickly, the brakes go On a listening walk, I hear all kinds of sounds. A bicycle bell ringing? A baby crying? A jet flies over. Jets are very noisy when they're overhead. A jet goes... A boy runs by dribbling his basketball. A lady hurries by us. She is wearing high heels. The lady's heels go... A bus is coming. The lady starts to run. The bus stops at the corner. The lady gets on. The bus starts up again. Around the corner, men are digging up the street. They are using a jackhammer. It makes a loud banging sound. The jackhammer hurts my ears as we walk by. Sometimes my father and I take Major to the park. It is quiet there. The sounds in the park are not like the noises in the street. My father and I walk down a shady path. I do not talk. I listen. I listen to my father's shoes on the path. They make a soft sound. They go... I listen to the birds in the park. I listen to the pigeons and the ducks. The pigeons fly down to meet us. They want us to feed them. The pigeons puff up their feathers. They take tiny steps. They come toward us, nodding their heads. They say... <coughs> At the pond, the ducks are waiting. They want us to feed them, too. The small ducks swim up close. They turn their heads on one side and look up at us. The small ducks waggle their tails and quack. They say... The big ducks are not so brave. They stay back and swim around in circles. The big ducks say... Sometimes I hear a woodpecker in the park. The woodpecker sounds like a little hammer. He goes... In the park, I hear crickets in the grass. The crickets go... I hear the wind in the leaves. It whispers... I hear bees in the flowers. It is fun to go on a listening walk. You do not have to go far. You can walk around the block and listen. You can walk around your yard and listen. You do not even have to take a walk to hear sounds. There are sounds everywhere all the time. All you have to do is keep still and listen to them. Right now, there are sounds you can hear. When you finish this page, 
close the book and listen. How many sounds can you hear right now? Close your book and count them. Hmm, that's a good idea. Let's all take a minute to listen just where we are. First, we should practice good listening. So our mouths or beaks and bodies are quiet and still. Our ears are open and our brains are paying attention. Are you ready? Try to pick out as many sounds as you can. All right, three, two, one, listen. Did you hear anything? I hear the cars in the street. I hear the neighbor's dog barking and I hear kids playing outside. What about you? Did you hear anything that surprised you? You sound like an awesome listener. I'm glad we got to practice that. Now, let's head back to Miss Kyla to learn more about how we can use our awesome listening to think like sound designers. Miss Kyla? Thanks, Quill. That was the perfect story to talk about sound this week. So like Quill said, listening is a skill that we can practice and get better at. When we practice listening, we're getting better at telling the difference between sounds, and we're getting better at describing those sounds to other people who haven't heard them. Remember how the girl in the story described the sounds she heard? She used some different words to describe them, like the lawnmower sound, which sounded like this. She said it sounded like a steady zoom. I also noticed how she said the wind whispered, and the woodpecker sounded like a little hammer. Take a moment now to think about one of the sounds you heard with Quill. How would you describe that sound to somebody who had never heard it before? It's important for sound designers who work on theater productions, movies, and TV shows to be able to describe the sounds they're trying to use so that other artists they're working with can understand and the whole piece can work together. The sound designer helps the audience enter the world of our story with their ears as well as with their eyes. Sound designers might also be in charge of choosing the underscoring for a show they're working on. The underscore is usually background music that helps the audience know what the feeling of a moment is. For example, it might be triumphant, or scary, or just silly. And that music helps tell your audience what they should be feeling in that scene. The sound designer also adds sound effects, like what we heard during the listening walk with Quill. They make sure to watch the show or video they're working on really carefully and pick out just the right sound effect to go with a given moment. The right sound effect usually lines up with a piece of action that a character is taking, like a door slamming or someone running down a hallway. Sound effects can really help tell a story, especially when they're combined in new and interesting ways. Take a look at the silly commercial for pickles from the 1950s and try to keep track of all the sound effects they added. Nothing upsets a pickle lover more than a dull, soggy pickle. Pickle lovers always insist on the proud pickle. Heinz, no compromise, no shortcuts, no soggy pickle. Heinz stops at nothing to give you a pickle that tastes the way no other pickle does. Crisp, full-bodied, savory. That's what makes Heinz the proud pickle. If you were the best tasting pickle, wouldn't you be proud? Wow, I heard tons of sound effects like and of course, that crunchy pickle. We can also use sound effects to inform things we don't see. So tell me what you think happens when I go through this door. Huh. What do you think happened there? But how exactly do they make all of these sounds? 
Sound designers make their sounds in lots of different ways. They have access to lots and lots of different items that they can combine to create all sorts of different sounds. Or they might have a specific device used to create just one specific sound. This is a squeaker made from a plastic tube, some cotton, and a plastic bag. Which sounds a lot like... What? I can do that myself, you know. Yes, I know, but I thought you were back at the nest. How'd you get back here so fast? Over time, new sounds have become standard as they've been recorded and have been used over and over again in different TV shows and movies throughout the years. You might be familiar with the laugh track as heard on cartoons and sitcoms. <laughs> Here's another sound you've probably heard before. It's called the Wilhelm scream. Sometimes when a character needs to scream dramatically, the director and sound designer have the actor perform the scream. Later, they put the sound in over top of the scream the actor made. We can try this ourselves by doing a silent screaming face at the same time that the sound plays. I'll play it again, and when I do, give me your best screaming face, but don't make any sound. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Awesome! You totally looked like you were doing the sound effect. And that's the magic of sound design! Now, let's give some sound designing a try ourselves. For this activity, you'll want to gather some objects from around your house that you can use to make some interesting sounds. And remember, if you're in a space where you need to keep quiet right now, there are lots of ways to explore different sounds without exploring volume. Also, make sure to only grab items that you're allowed to use or that belong to you. Great items for this are shoes, toys, sticks, or even just paper. Then experiment with your objects to see what different sounds and patterns you can create when you play them at the same time or just right next to each other. Now, thinking like a sound designer, can you come up with an action that goes with one of the sounds you've already created? You can even do this with a friend and try to create sound effects to go along with their action. The possibilities are endless, so keep your ears open, stay curious, get creative, and I'll see you next time. Bye!